Hey guys, Joe Pai here. Welcome back to the shop. You know, I had a viewer request for a video on how to drill a hole on an angled surface. And when I started thinking about it, you know, there's a technique to do it, but it's not just for angled surfaces. It could be for circular surfaces too, or a radial surface. So if you're trying to drill a hole on a round part or an angled part, as your drill hits it, your drill is going to go whoop. It's going to do one of these things. Same thing on a radius. It's going to want to walk off. There's an easy solution to it. It's rather quick. Uh, sometimes it leaves behind a trace element of exactly how you did it. So if you do this, make sure that the application is favorable for the little detail that it may leave behind. Let's take a walk out in the shop and I'll show you how to do it. Okay guys, for sake of this demonstration, I'm going to use a piece of half inch by one inch 17-4 stainless and I've got it squeezed in the vise at approximately a 45 degree angle. The angle for this demonstration really isn't critical because any angle is going to influence a drill in a way that you don't want it to be influenced. So if we were to come down straight on this surface with the drill right now, it probably wouldn't end up well. When the drill hits this surface, it's going to hit the surface and it's going to want to follow the surface. Plus it's going to beat the edges off the drill and you're going to end up in the doghouse before you even start. The best way to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish here is to put an end mill in before you use the drill. I'm using a quarter inch end mill because I'm going to drill a quarter inch hole. Now like I said before, you're not always going to find an end mill that's going to give you the pilot counterbore that you're looking for. So check and see what's allowable and leave it at that. Snug everything up because anytime you have irregular surfaces coming into contact, you're going to have some dancing going on. I'm going to bring my end mill down until it's just about touching that part. And I'm going to set the stop on my quill here. So this comes down to a specific height every time. Uh, my old girl here, she rattles a little bit, and unless you live around the corner and you want to come in here and fix this machine for free, uh, be kind with the comments. Sequentially, I'm going to come up with the table at about 10 or 15 thousandths at a time, and I'm going to come back down with the end mill, and I'm going to continue that operation until I have a full footprint. Now, if you're allowed to, you can also sweep in from the side to your location, but it's not going to give you a true track. When you look down on top of it, it's going to be more of a doghouse shape. So if you need a hole, follow this method here. Also very important to note that whatever end mill you select, make sure it's a center cutting end mill where you're going to have a protrusion at the bottom of your pocket. Maintaining a gentle pressure, a downward pressure, on your quill handle as you come up with the table, it will take the bounce out of the tool to the material that you're going to find, like if you ever tried to drill on a top of a round part, as it's going in, everything's bouncing around and going crazy. Well, if you come up with the table, you can eliminate that bounce as well. 
I'm going to move off center and I'm going to put a center drill in there. Now I'm cheating and using a quarter inch tool and a quarter inch collet. But if you have to do this, try not to do that. That's no good for the corners of the end mill. But I am not a big fan of putting an end mill in a drill chuck ever because it's not intended for it. And if you want to ruin a perfectly good chuck, well, you just go ahead and stick an end mill in it. But if I'm going to use a collet or an end mill, I'm going to use it in a collet not in a drill chuck so don't do that do it if you can't get around it any other way but I wouldn't endorse it okay I am back on location I'm gonna turn it down to a lower speed bottom of the hole successfully better drill. Pop your drill in and proceed. gear so I don't burn up the drill. It's the beauty of a digital readout. You can move all over the place and not worry about having to re-indicate anything. it's important to note that when this drill breaks through the back side of the part if this is a through hole that you're looking to create it's going to start breaking through on only one side of the hole at a time and you will feel that bounce going back up this up the drill into the handle you'll feel everything knocking around take your time as you break through or at that point the drill could start to walk because of the uneven influence on the flute There you go guys, 45 degree hole, 17 four stainless. Piece of cake. I'm gonna stick a piece of round stock in here and do the same thing on a piece of round stock. Just to show you that it can be done. 
and it's not going to matter if it's round, flat, tapered, whatever. This technique will work. Make sure that's in focus for you. There we go. That's better. Okay, I'm going to walk drastically off center here. Worst case scenario. That's about as far off center as you're going to get without breaking through the edge. Here we go. Same process. Get close. Bring your stop up. Do the rest of the work with a combined table crank and handle combination. Any of the shops I've ever worked in, anytime somebody drops something because it's hot, we refer to it as heavy. It just sounds better. Back on location. Digital readout is a wonderful thing. If you don't have one, go get one. A lot of you are thinking a quiet machine is a beautiful thing too, right? <laughs> so am I. Since I use this machine all the time, it's really tough to have it down for maintenance. Believe me, it's on my list. And if anybody knows exactly what that is that's knocking in there, by all means, post it in the comment line. If it's something that's easy to fix and I'm just not fixing it, I'm going to kick myself. So if you know what that knocking is, put it in the comment line.
as your drill breaks through the back side, make sure your spindle, your quill lock, is gently dragging on the quill so that there is some resistance, and that will help you with the bounce that you're going to encounter as well. Okay, there you go. Off center hole. That is very off center. And reposition those guys so you can get a better look. Now if you get to use an end mill that's a little bit bigger than the hole you want, you're going to end up with a line right where it cleans up, naturally because it's the transition between the two diameters. So if that's okay, since the top elliptical section of that hole is basically worthless anyway, then go ahead and do it. But end mill, center drill, drill straight through. It's a great way to do it. Use a combination of table and quill moves. Keep a light drag on your quill lock at all times. And this is a piece of cake. This particular operation, if you take your time with your start and take your time at the end, you will get a nice, clean, straight hole on location. You can see how far off-center that one was. Now do be careful when you break through on the back side of your part. Chances are you're going to get a little ugly inside of your hole, somewhere in this area, because this is breaking through first. The drill is going to walk out and you're going to have a little bump in there so if you can't follow it up with a reamer or an end mill please be aware that whatever you're trying to stick through there may encounter that bump it's not uncommon and it is almost impossible to avoid if you're not reaming afterwards but that's how it's done guys end mill center drill drill take your time i hope you got something out of this and hope you got something you can use it's a good trick commonly used and now it's your trick that's all I got alright well that's a pretty easy fix uh, you won't always find an end mill that is going to give you the pilot pocket that you're looking for so that small conical trace that you may see and if you have a piece with an angled hole in it that you may have purchased or you get a chance to run across one in the field Take a look at it and see if you can see that little trace ring. I'll bet you that's how they did it. Anyway, check with the engineer or check with the application. Make sure that's acceptable. And just because it's an end mill, it doesn't mean that's not going to walk. So take your time. Feather it in and out. Come up with the table. Feather it in and out. Make sure that you take your time on that. And your final feature should be uh, just fine. So that's all I got. That's how easy it is. Until next time, Joe Pye Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. I'm out.